Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our panel discussion, the Chief Technology Officers of Cloud. That's here, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know the T stood for te technology. I you didn't travel. Know. I thought travel. it was travel. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, yeah, being here. Uh, we have uh, one, uh, one, one more person that's going to join us momentarily here. Uh, so my name is Al Sadowski. I'm a research director at uh, 451 Research, uh, which is a division of the 451 Group. Uh, some of our sister companies are Uptime Institute and the Yankee Group. And we provide syndicated research and advisory services to vendors and consumers within the digital infrastructure. Uh, OpenStack is a coverage area of, of mine in particular. And we talk to various service providers and software providers. We track the different business models in and around OpenStack, uh, market sizing as well. And we also have an info pro service where we talk to enterprises and get their insights. And increasingly, they're all uh, talking about OpenStack. So we have a really great panel for you guys today. Uh, we have, uh, it's pretty easy, they're, all their titles are CTO. Uh, so we have uh, David Lindquist from IBM, uh, Hai Ying uh, Wang is gonna be uh, up here momentarily, John Engates from Rackspace, and Lou Tucker, they're all right down the line here. Um, I don't need a press button. No, no, well, so uh, we're, we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna dive in. So one of the first things I just wanted to uh, Oh, you know, let's not do that yet. So, I guess, guys, the first question we'll ask. Okay, here's uh, Hai Ying. Hey. <laughs> got our fourth panelist. Welcome. Um, so, not only is it your job to be technically awesome, but you got to take that technology and, you know, make some money for your company. So, I guess the first question for you is, you know, what's your particular, as you go through, um, we'll just start uh, here with Lou and work on down the line. So what's your company's particular strategy around OpenStack and how are you guys profiting from, from OpenStack? Sure, well, I'm a CTO of cloud computing at Cisco Systems. So as you know, we're an infrastructure provider and we provide uh, OpenStack solutions um, built upon our computing storage and networking, uh, as well as services around that, helping our customers build clouds, private, public, large, small. John? And uh, John and Gates from Rackspace, and our strategy with OpenStack since the very beginning and when we launched it was to have a software platform to power our public cloud aspirations. We have data centers all over the world, including right here in Hong Kong now running OpenStack, uh, powering our public cloud. We also uh, have some great solutions for customers around private clouds. We have a number of um, customers now, you know, a large number running private clouds hosted at Rackspace and private clouds uh, in customer premise, and then our uh, you know, real strategy is to put all that together into hybrid cloud solutions that really make the best of uh, cloud for customers. I'm Dave Lindquist, the CTO for, at IBM for our software, our cloud software. Um, our strategy, and Danny took you through that quite a bit this morning at the keynote, but fundamentally is to drive and leverage OpenStack as a ubiquitous de facto infrastructure as a service. Earlier this year, we announced an open cloud architecture. And at the base of that open cloud architecture is OpenStack. What we're doing is incorporating and using OpenStack across all our cloud deliverables, whether they're the recent deliverables we had this year on smart cloud orchestration, our on-premise software and smart cloud foundations, our integrated uh, systems, our pure systems, as well as our public uh, software. And what we're doing is extending the capabilities of OpenStack to address many of the requirements we see coming in from businesses, certainly the hybrid requirements, as John said, but also the uh, security, backup recovery, and how to optimize and manage a lot of enterprise workloads on OpenStack. Hi, uh, my name is Hai Ying Wang. I'm from Huawei. Uh, so Huawei is a, a, a telecom solution provider, is a leading telecom solution provider. We have been providing uh, IT infrastructure for telco and the emerging market for a while. And then right now, we bet on the OpenStack to drive the adoptions in our respect market, specifically telcos and uh, emerging market like China. And we, uh, OpenStack was sort of a pillow of our 
solutions that will glue the different pieces we have together as a uh, sort of a control panel, tie the thing together, and the solution. So we really double down on the OpenStack. I believe that's the future to go. And actually, Huawei just became a gold member of the OpenStack Foundation, so yes. welcome. Welcome. Thank you. welcome. Thank you. Great. So 451 Research did this uh, bottoms-up analysis where we talked to close to 60 uh, vendors that are involved in the uh, OpenStack ecosystem and, and broke them into six different categories. And uh, there's the PaaS players, for example, like AppFog, and there's the uh, service providers like Rackspace and IBM. Uh, there's DevOps, uh, OpsCode, for example. Uh, there's the uh, OpenStack with other clouds, uh, so RightScale, for example. Uh, this, the distribution uh, companies who we heard from some today already, uh, Red Hat and Suse, Canonical. Um, and then there's those IT services and turnkey systems uh, solutions, and Mirantis would be an example here. And we uh, are estimating 2013, the uh, market to be a little over 600 million and eclipse a uh, billion dollars by 2015. So I guess my question to the panel is like, how, how do you guys see the business models evolving around OpenStack, you know, moving a little bit from services to products and, and things like that? So yeah, I don't know if uh, yeah. somebody wants to take that one first, but how do you see the business models evolving around OpenStack in general? Actually, I think you're underestimating it. Um, you're underestimating the, uh, the potential here because one of the things we're seeing is there are there's actually a much broader set of uses for OpenStack uh, as a platform. So we're seeing the cloud service providers naturally, but for example, we're working a lot with a lot of the media companies uh, that are using it as the way to run their data center. So I think we're going to start seeing it. People talk about it as an operating system for the data center. It's a new middleware layer, let's say, for these applications, and that to me as has even higher potential. Yeah. Uh, one thing I probably should point out, so we didn't include uh, equipment providers, so uh, hardware and software, because it's general purpose. It may, they may be using it for OpenStack, okay. so we didn't include those. And right now, the software defined, the, as the uh, software defined network companies uh, for now, but I, uh, I appreciate what you're saying. Any, anybody else care to comment about it? Um, I mean, I guess you're asking how's, how the business model is evolving. I think, obviously, we're, uh, covering kind of the obvious things like public cloud, and, and that's growing rapidly for us. Uh, private clouds hosted at customer premise, and again, uh, hosted at Rackspace, that's maybe an, uh, not an obvious private cloud kind of uh, deployment model when you think about sort of behind the firewall, that's where most people are thinking about it. But we're also seeing a great number of customers looking at it uh, as a uh, you know, carved off sort of, of like a public cloud service. Get it out of my data center, yeah. but I still want it to be sure. sort of uh, carved off. I, I think um, you know, in, embedded in other platforms like a, a software as a service, we see that, or embedded in a PaaS, that's another model for, for use uh, of OpenStack as an underpinning for those. I mean, every, every SaaS business and, and, and other types, they need infrastructure, and this is just a great way to automate and orchestrate and, and deploy and manage infrastructure. So it, it's going to be like Lou said, it's, it's the operating system of the cloud. It's going to be in, in a lot of different form factors and locations as we evolve. I, I think the uh, business models will shift as the value shifts. Um, we're certainly seeing a lot of value currently at the infrastructure layers uh, offered by providers or offered uh, through distributions or packaged with solutions. But as, as the use of cloud shifts from uh, one in which we're getting a lot more efficiency and a lot more dynamics out of composition of resources to one where business units, uh, lines of business, can drive new innovative business applications, new business models, new business processes. The value, the business models will shift with that value in supporting uh, uh, these new revenue drivers. Great. Um, so one of the other things we've done is we've talked to a number of enterprise or, uh, enterprises and we asked them, you know, what are some exciting new technologies and, and things you're looking at? And when we asked this question in 2012, OpenStack wasn't even mentioned. In 2013, it's now on a list with companies that spend a lot of money on advertising, have products that they're currently in the market, and here's this three-year-old open source platform that's in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the same conversation. Um, so I guess you know the question, and John, I'll tee it up to you as the you know the the big service provider um, 
uh, right now. So what market segments or use cases are you seeing that are, are driving some of this adoption? Well, I think, um, like I, I, I maybe spoiled it, but software as a service is one that's just taken off. I mean, every, every CIO is thinking about getting to the cloud, and I think uh, software as a service plays a key role in getting some of those applications off-premise into the cloud. Uh, Lou mentioned media. We see a ton of interest in the media and entertainment space in terms of um, uh, delivering content, storing content, um, archiving, con I mean, all kinds of things uh, in, in that space. Um, you know, we don't focus on this as a company, but we also uh, have been involved in scientific computing use cases for, uh, you know, OpenStack. The guys from CERN are here talking about what they're doing and, um, you know, their, their, uh, their use case, the MIT folks as well. They're on a uh, keynote panel, I believe, tomorrow with Rackspace to talk about how they're using uh, OpenStack in their environment. So scientific and research. Um, what else? I mean, just really the entire spectrum of, of really uh, internet-facing apps, but now also more of the back, back-end kind of enterprise apps starting to make their way into the cloud. And as the cloud matures and as the technology set, um, you know, sort of uh, broadens and can take into account some of the needs of those apps, we're seeing a lot more of those move to. Uh, exactly. I just want to. You're probably seeing a lot in terms of analytics as well. I mean, the whole big data. Big data. Yeah. I mean, we're we're awash in data now, right, and yes. the only way to handle that is on a cloud. Yeah. Mobile. Mobile is a. It's it's a huge use case to. Uh, to drive the adoption of cloud computing, and I think all of these sort of go hand in hand. It's hard to, yeah. you know, pull them apart. They're all, uh, you know, that's your job. In a, <laughs> embedded in one another to some extent. I, I, David, for, first of all, I think the um, the numbers are showing here. O OpenStack is clearly accelerating mm -hmm. in the minds of customers, particularly when they think about what's the open platform that they want to base their cloud stacks on. It, it is accelerating very fast. Um, we, we recently did a study, had a study of over 800 uh, companies, large and small, across a variety of industries, global, with uh, CIOs and CTOs. And the, the set of the questions were about understanding their adoption of cloud and where they were at. And it, they quickly broke into three buckets, which was very interesting to look at. I mean, probably well understood buckets, but what was behind it was fascinating. About 50% about had embraced cloud and we're leveraging cloud within their data centers um, or, or public from providers to really fundamentally change the way they offer IT to their organization. So they're getting a lot of efficiency out of the environment. About 30%, unfortunate, I think for that 30%, we're still in a very cautious type of outlook on cloud and we're very conservative and still looking at how they were going to bring cloud computing in. But what was also interesting is the other end of the spectrum, upwards of 20% of the companies were fundamentally using cloud to change their business models. They were using cloud to change the way they interacted with their customers through mobile and social. They were using cloud to change insights into inventory uh, analytics, into campaigns, into understanding communities, into understanding trending behaviors. They're getting all kinds of decision-based insights into how to drive the next wave of business models, business process, business applications. And when you contrasted the financial results of these companies that mapped into those three buckets, you began to see the leaders in industries changing their business models, that 20% with cloud, that 50% plus the 20 changing the efficiency of their environment, and then basically lagging behind. You know, so it, it is changing rapidly. We've seen the same thing. It, it, it's the business model of our customers that are changing yes. as well. And that's where, actually, I think Jeffrey Moore's got a great analogy, you know, which is systems of record versus systems of engagement. And the systems of record, you know, with you know, Y2K problem, we probably solved all those. That's done. So, I mean, your traditional ERP systems and everything else, we don't expect to see a whole lot of growth in. Companies are trying to find better ways to interact with their customers, their supply chain, their okay. consumers, and that's driving, I think, a lot of this, this rethinking about how IT is delivering those capabilities to the business units right. that are trying to reach out to those very same customers. Yeah, and from what are we see in the customer, on the telco and uh, on the emerging market, on the telco, they have a pressure on, the, on replacing the current um, purpose-built infrastructure to support the service that uh, have a uh, social and a mobile drive uh, crazy, so have to move to that direction. 
And on the emerging market, they have started using ITs. They, they, are, they need to consolidate the infrastructures. So we see the OpenStack play a unique role here. I think we are doing great work to support uh, traditional enterprise IT apps, so the state of all entirely covered. But in our two sectors, we look, they actually don't have that kind of apps. They have different apps. I think uh, uh, OpenStack will be the ideal candidate to lose coupled and uh, scale out. But we're still missing some pieces. So uh, I think, but we see the interest. Almost all the telco providers have a plan to go to the cloud, and OpenStack is really the first choice for them. Great. So, so some would argue that uh, OpenStack is maybe still a little mature and not enterprise grade. Wh how would you define enterprise grade? And feel free to challenge the assumption that it's not, uh, you know, ready. But w what is enterprise grade, and how does uh, OpenStack get to that mass adoption phase uh, based on it being, you know, uh, enterprise grade? So I don't know if well, I think like enterprise grade for a lot of years meant it was you know, gold-plated hardware with a badge on it, with a support contract behind it, and, you know, had to be redundant, and, you know, all of these different characteristics to support that application that sort of relied on all that infrastructure to be there, guaranteed 100%, right? That's how people thought of it. And I think the definition of enterprise grade is just dramatically changing, because, you know, some of the companies that are delivering enterprise grade software in a SaaS model, they build their software very differently behind the scenes than, you, than the enterprise would have imagined or would have thought. I mean, you know, we, we don't necessarily uh, build applications the same way we, we once did, and therefore the definition of what an enterprise expects in a cloud is going to have to change as well. They're, they're going to have to adapt to that, and I think the leading edge of enterprises are. I think there's some that still look at it and say it needs to have these characteristics, and a, yeah. uh, but, but dramatically, that, I mean, that's, that's dramatically changing and very rapidly. So inter enterprise grade, I think, is almost an, it's an old term representing, I think, the old style of these applications. But as, as I mentioned, it, as, cus as companies now are changing who they're trying to serve, they're not just serving their employees anymore. Right. They're actually trying to reach a much, much larger audience. So they're learning from what the web companies have learned a long time ago, which is that you need a new architecture. And therefore, I think, I mean, in that realm, I think OpenStack is absolutely ready. It's absolutely designed for a scale-out architecture where a lot of, where scaling becomes one of the mission-critical things they have to be able to do. They can't afford to n miss that spike of consumer interest, you know, or, or, or that change in, uh, the dynamically change, you know, flow of interactions that they have with their, their supply chain. So I think enterprise grade is actually changing a definition when they start to look outside of what just serving their employees with the traditional apps. Ying, what about from uh, Huawei's uh, well, perspective? Yeah, so I think the, um, I agree with what the guy says. I think the, the apps will decide what is enterprise grade. So the early terms are ERP, Oracle based, and the traditional infrastructure, even VMware infrastructure is better because they're more tight and stateful. And when you have a look at the new apps, the new SaaS model, and they're more scale out, web apps, and it, OpenStack will perfect fit. So that will be the, their enterprise grade. So I think it depends on who you're asking, what app you're specifically yeah. talking about. Uh, some of apps are already enterprise great, and uh, we just need more. I think that may touch the point that uh, we need a pass to be fast so we can develop more apps for enterprise. Um, because the current app is still an older generation, same workload that work well for the old infrastructure, but I mean not good for new infrastructure. Dave? Well, I, I, I think all of us are using OpenStack. Right. Uh, I think much of the audience, the companies they are using OpenStack, I, I do think it's ready. It has been ready. Um, I think the uptake that we're seeing, seeing since Grizzly has been fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think we have, as a community, work to do. We've done a lot of work in areas of security. We've done a lot of work in areas of uh, testing, um, getting the quality, the availability. I think we do have to focus more on interoperability, yep. interop, particularly as we drive this where everybody wants to take it into a much more of a hybrid environment. Um, but I, I, to me, it's clearly ready. Yeah, I think there's maybe you know some areas where we could we could do more. We could add more in terms of some of the security features that uh, some enterprises are looking for. Granular. Um, you know, permissions about who can do what in the system, how, how the system, um, you know, trusts ele other elements of the system. I think, you know, that's an, an aspect of it. 
Um, you know, enterprise, it's not so much the enterprise grade, it's enterprise features that they sort of have come to expect from a platform that they want to uh, have similar functionality in, in OpenStack. And I don't, that, that doesn't mean that OpenStack can't be used in enterprise, it, it just may be used more uh, broadly in an enterprise if we give them a few more capabilities and features that, that orient it towards some of the, the, the historic and legacy workload type yeah. context. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I actually don't think that the customers that we're talking to are not looking to just shift to another platform in their same application. Uh, it's, right. not, it's not that that's happening. They're seeing a whole new class of applications. They're now tr struggling with how do they bring them out, and the cloud is the best way to do it. And we even see in the, like in the, in the telco space. I mean, we're, you know, we call it network function virtualization. I want load balancing of the service. I want firewall of the service. What they really are talking about is they need those things to dynamically scale. Uh, that market is growing so fast in terms of demand that your traditional approach uh, just isn't going to work anymore. So they need to have these new ways of thinking, designing applications, and that's really what OpenStack, so I, if anything, I think that OpenStack is moving into a lot of these different areas at the same time. And as a community, we're, we're trying to make sure that we balance the innovation, the addition of new services and everything else with a need to continually go back and making it better for operators, making it easier to manage, making it more secure. Those two, two themes are, are which I think you're going to see the, the community really focusing on. Right. Now, compute, storage have evolved a lot faster uh, than networking. <laughs> and <laughs> as an understatement, I guess. Um, now, as far as software-defined networking and network function virtualization, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of discussion happening there. Um, Lou, I'll well, let you it, tee this one up first. You know, it's interesting. Guy. I think we can all comment on it as well. But these two things seem to be happening at the same time. I mean, um, Martin Casado had really nice talk about how virtualization now is being applied into, into network, and I really agree that, that we're seeing that this whole trend around SDN and network virtualization is happening and cloud computing is happening. And what we've seen is almost every provider of new SDN controllers and everything else is using OpenStack as a vehicle to have that expressed in their data center. These are happening as sort of two layers in the stack, and both are evolving, uh, co-evolving actually, right now at the same pace. And that, that, that is a marriage made in heaven because now the individual applications or the tenant or whatever gets to take it, it gets to be able to have these virtualized data centers that they're they're deploying their applications on as we move forward in the past and other kinds of things and have the infrastructure now respond accordingly. Whereas if we had just simply a fixed infrastructure, it would be very hard to do that. All right. I, I, th I think Lou is exactly right. What, what, what we're seeing in the software-defined networking is really pushing the envelope on compute networking as well as uh, various aspects of storage. Um, it's really bringing that layer to an abstraction of a software-defined environment mm -hmm. where you can very rapidly compose the infrastructure into patterns to meet the needs of a specific workload, whether it's scale, availability, um, zoning, et cetera. And what's driving that is, from a business perspective, how quickly can I put new applications or processes into market? How fast can I take what's the platform layer and compose services so that I can rapidly develop my application, get it in field, and see if I'm achieving that business outcome. That's dependent on the infrastructure layer becoming a very dynamic fabric through this software-defined environment. And OpenStack, the core projects in OpenStack are really the fundamental projects that the industry is looking at to make that software-defined whether you call it software-defined environment or infrastructure, but that software-defined layer. But it's the businesses that are driving down because that's how they're driving revenue in their businesses is really to, to really extend their reach out to their customers through mobile, to create very compelling interactions with social, to get business insights through analytics and big data on what's happening with the communities, what's happening with individuals, what new opportunities exist. So that time to market, that value is what's driving those compositional needs. And, and to me, that's what the core of what's happening with yeah, software-defined yeah. network, storage, and compute. Yeah. I think the beautiful thing about OpenStack is it, that it, there is really no better place right now than, than OpenStack and this community to, to do these kind of network uh, yeah. transitions or these, these innovations that we have to do. I mean, this is a place where you can have sort of a many-to-many -many relationship amongst 
the, the network providers, the network uh, vendors, the, the, the users, the, uh, the people that are building large major uh, public clouds and also private clouds. I mean, I, I don't think we could have gone as fast as we've gone in software-defined networking if it was right. just a purely proprietary one-to-one -one kind of relationship vendor to customer. I think it really is now uh, set up nicely for, for this to go faster and faster because, because there's going to be a pull from guys like Rackspace uh, there's going to be a, tre a tremendous pull to make sure these networks can scale, they have the features that the customers are looking for, and, and like you said, they can be expressed within OpenStack where the customer can, can actually uh, you know, compose the network however right. they want to. So it has to be flexible, it has to be scalable, it has to be reliable. All those things are going to be just tremendous pressures and pulls on those networks. You know, you know, as a fundamental principle that we in the community developed around OpenStack, which is it is a set of services. And that's what makes it up that are basically loosely coupled, but we specifically designed so the specialists in that area can really go and right. push that one service as fast. Uh, we were part of the very early discussions of, of what was then called Quantum, which was trying to pull the networking out of Nova um, because we felt that trying to do networking was just like all mixed up inside of, of compute, and, and then that meant we could never take advantage of the innovation that's happening in software-defined networking. And so we really pulled that out, and David, you mentioned that. We were trying most particularly to pay attention to the abstractions. Yes. Yeah. If we could get the abstractions right that a developer, an application developer, found useful, then we have the freedom to explore all different varieties of, of software-defined networking and different things that can be done in the infrastructure and to provide this capability. So it allows innovation both sort of above and below the line in OpenStack. Yeah, I think the OpenStack really bring a very good platform to drive network virtualization and uh, storage. So server virtualization did a good job. And then, then we moved to these two sectors. And storage fundamentally is too expensive. And that's so people are doing those uh, uh, virtualization. And then network is just too complicated. Mm -hmm. and, but I think the, the real drive for us would be the use case, the applications. Mm -hmm. And OpenStack, given it's pervasive everywhere, lots of people trying to use different ways, and innovation usually happens in this place. So Nisiri is a good example, right? They use OpenStack as a platform, reach out, and uh, they're doing a good job. I would expect more in our uh, sectors, in the telcos, we see the workload, especially on network environment. When you move to OpenStack, the big challenge is that how you can guarantee that workload. That, that network uh, connectivity they want. They're more connective centric than the computer centric. So that will bring lots of push on there. And I think we expect that in the next few years we see lots of ch innovation in this room, this space. Yeah. Right. So the, uh, when, when we talk to enterprises, when we talk to vendors, uh, one of the consistent responses as to why OpenStack w is around the community and uh, the, the vibrant community. and. Uh, um, one of the things that uh, people question is, so when you talk about Amazon Web Services or VMware or some other companies, they have a, a, a defined strategy. The company's all on board. In the case of OpenStack, there's a board, there's a community. Everybody doesn't have the same interests, and it seems like everybody's... Uh, uh, well, in fact, I think we have the same interests. What's interesting at this, maybe this period of history or whatever, that we see there's a lot of change going on and that we all have customers who are trying to adapt to that change. Does having, does having multiple uh, interests versus having that, that single, is that a, uh, a help or a hindrance as going forward as more and more companies start to you know, profit from, from the platform? Right now, I mean, particularly like sitting on, on the foundation board, it's, it's been very re rewarding because we actually are all, we have a common goal. And that is to make OpenStack succeed and to make OpenStack grow. And we are all dedicated to that goal. And so I think, I mean, and in this last release, there are over 900 uh, individual contributors to, to Havana. We've got over 12,000 people in, in the community uh, today. That's a lot of talent. And generally, the talent is coming from some of the best and brightest from each of those companies. So it's sort of like a very elite and in those who are develop OpenStack developers here, I applaud you because I think they really are focusing on, and by having these separate projects, you're able to get in and you're able to contribute in, a, in a, an area that you really know a lot about. So right now, I, maybe it's just the honeymoon period we're in right now, but I, I think that there's every reason to believe that this is going to just continue to grow as we're working together. And then in the market, we'll fight it out over you know, our customers and everything yeah. else. I think the other, ac the a other aspect of OpenStack that, that makes this not as much of a problem is that it's truly a meritocracy in terms of who's contributing code, yeah. who's 
who's pulling? You know, who's act actively making this thing go forward? And I think that's, that's what a community does. They, they get behind an idea, they rally behind an effort that they see you know, a lot of promise in, and they all you know, pull in the same direction. And I don't think that the, uh, you know, if you perceive debate from the outside looking in, I think that may be amongst, you know, maybe people like us, but down in the, in the developer, you know, trenches where, they, where the real work gets done, I, I don't think that happens as, as much. It's like, who is contributing code? Who is the smart guy in the room coming up yep. with the best ideas and, and driving right. this thing forward? Yeah. Well, code talks. Code yeah, talks. yeah, nobody um, I, Lou mentioned it earlier. T to me, part of, part of the growth, the explosion that's occurred in the community, obviously the open, open ecosystem that John just mentioned and, and the way that's run, but because of the way OpenStack was architected from the beginning as a very clean separation of the core domains with, with well-defined plug-in extension points. Right. And that allowed a community to have a common goal of driving OpenStack to a point of a de facto infrastructure as a service, a platform. The, all of us partner on solutions and compete aggressively in areas and collaborate in areas. The contention, if you want to call it contention, is sometimes in a competitive spirit of innovation about doing each other, is healthy. Yep. That drives us to drive things that you me mentioned on software defined networking. It drives the new levels that are occurring in storage, not just in file block object, but in tiering and, ma and management. It drives us in compute to not think about just the virtualization, but the abstraction yep. and the how do I deploy a complex pattern using a, a network. So to me, the competitive energy in the community at large is driving the innovation around these core projects, around these well-defined points of uh, extensibility, which keep a common goal. How do we drive OpenStack, and then how do we start bringing innovation into that? That's very healthy, and I think that is, as long as we continue the community and the common goal and don't fragment, mm -hmm. which I, 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 I see that it's, it's consistent coming together, it's going to be very strong yeah. and healthy. Yeah, I mean, imagine if a company, I mean, our PTLs are elected by their peers, uh, review is, you know, reviews are required and before code is committed in, in Tubstream. Uh, all of our guys are upstairs on the second floor this week on the design summit for the next release, make debating what can go, how much is too much, you know, what do we really ne need to get done during this next period of time. Imagine if you had a company that was organized that way. I think that you probably would see, you know, the speed and innovation happening right. much, much faster. So, in fact, I think that meritocracy you mentioned is what is 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 really a tribute to, to why, you know, the reason why that we're seeing this kind of of, of explosion and right. Yeah, I, you know, I want to give you a chance to get in here as the newest yeah. well, gold I, member yeah. of the foundation. <laughs> yeah. so. I'm very excited to be gold yes. member of Huawei. I think uh, OpenStack, uh, what do we like, and uh, we see it's uh, it's re uh, at this stage at least. It's developer-driven, and uh, and uh, this is probably the most modern software project ever. And uh, there's a lot, lots of technology going on. You attract the best people coming to work there, and it, it's basically it's not a solution. It's a platform. So there's not much business interest that you can directly use that. So that's good. And we're also in the early stage of uh, cloud development. We have very clear two target: Amazon and VMware. So it's a long way to go before you're fighting each other. Uh, but in the same time, if we can keep this hack. Uh, the pattern, and we can. I hope the board can continue to do that. We focus on how to get this technology going, and we have a clear mission. We want to be pervasive open source platform. If we're just doing that, and I think it will be in the right track. And just like in Linux, we don't have a problem, right? Just go everywhere. Everybody making money by doing service and anything else. But you first make them a best platform first uh, before you, anything else can happen. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, gentlemen, thank you. Um, I think we're uh, out of time at this point, but I hopefully uh, we'll, we'll stay in touch and, and uh, be back here next year at talking about uh, the more successes and exceeding the billion dollar revenue targets that uh, you said are good. underestimated. <laughs> so appreciate everybody in the audience's time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.